Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you Wednesday, hump day here, 14 August. Wild, wild day yesterday, as you guys all saw. A little bit of reconciliation on the trade front between China and the U.S. We got caught. We were short dollar Swiss. Uh, through that 90 level, we were short dollar yen, thinking 105 was going to break, and we were long euro dollar, waiting for the uh, 112.30 to break. Um, over, when the news hit, we did square. Uh, we took some losses there, but we did square pretty quickly. But we were very slow to uh, flip, flip the uh, position, so we didn't really profit the way we should have um, on that kind of a move which was, um, you know, just kind of annoying uh, is the best way to describe it. Um, but here we are. Uh, no real harm done. We ended up today with just tiny profit, but Euro Norway uh, carried it. That, that stuff collapsed a percent. Um, anyway, that was yesterday. This is today. Uh, the first thing on my mind today is uh, let's not fight this tape now. These are very powerful bars um, that, you know, you have to respect. So first one is dollar Swiss, uh, bullish engulfing from, from the lows. Uh, was that the year's lows? Yeah, that was the low of the year. And now we've bullish engulfed. Um, dollar Swiss looks set uh, to head higher. You got to keep your eye on the bonds, which also almost uh, bearish engulfed, but did not bearish engulf. So let's let's make that clear. We need to get down. We really need to get down below this uh, 129.14 area. If I'm going to be specific, it's 129.12. Um, not holding our breath for this, uh, but if the dollar is going to continue higher, this needs to happen. Let's go to Euro here. Obviously we put that 30, uh, 30 high in or 29 high in just before CPI and then we were just screwing around uh, between 14 and 24 uh, when the news broke. Euro was slow to turn as you can see here, well, you can't really see here, but it was pretty slow to turn. You had plenty of time to sell. Uh, we ended up selling through all five, uh, which was fine. We did not go short because um, we just really didn't understand the news and why it was um, so risk on. So we were a little bit slow to uh, buy into the, oh, this is the end of the trade war. S&Ps are probably going to go up uh, 60, 70 handles. Anyway, uh, here we are now at the bottom of the range at this pivot area, 111.62. It's interesting in a lot of ways because this 62 area, this was the um, FOMC sort of uh, push higher day. So this was the... There was a lot of supply here. Once we finally pushed through, um, you know, we we freed ourselves um, from uh, from downside worries. So this will be an interesting pivot. Looks like it should be in play today. We do have some minor data today in Europe. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, in a half hour's time, we have some German data. We got French CPI, German preliminary GDP. It's pretty interesting. We do have um, UK CPI today. Average hourly earnings came in in line, but relatively hot. Let's face it. I mean, if there wasn't Brexit going on, cable would have shot higher yesterday. But because of Brexit, you know, everything's kind of kind of on hold. We also have unemployment change in Europe and industrial production. Um, so 
these all of these numbers could have an effect and could push us through this uh, 111.62 area. Again, you want to keep your eye on bonds, which have um, have not gone lower. They're a little bit higher today. And also, let's look at boons, um, which are at the all-time highs. So you would you would expect euro to continue to go lower from the booned chart. Look at that boon chart. My God, that is unbelievable. Uh, you would expect euro to go lower from the booned chart. Um, less so from the 10-year bond chart. Um, let's look at dollar yen. Big 190-point move uh, up to 107, the figure. Consolidating a bit now. We've been 25, uh, 55 overnight. Uh, is this going to do a little bit of a sideways motion and shoot higher? later in the week when we have U.S. retail sales or U.S. industrial production. Uh, seems a good chance that, that that could happen. Again, we want to watch U.S. fixed income and we want to keep an eye on equities. But um, again, like the dollar Swiss bar, these bars are not to be taken lightly. Um, we're not going to fade the tape here. Uh, if anything, uh, we're square and we'll be look to get tactically long this certainly at 10650 I'm not sure what to do uh, euro shorts look a little bit more interesting just because we're closer to this pivot at 111.62 and if we go back to the euro chart the European open isn't what it used to be but you could probably take a guess that we're going to take a peek through 111.62 at the open here uh, which is in uh, 30 minutes what else Aussie we had some Aussie uh, data out last night I haven't even looked at it um, wage price index was in line at 0 05 uh, super interesting this uh, 6818 here's the weeklies when you get a weekly bar like this after a big down move, usually it it, um, it means this thing's going to turn. It didn't make a lot of sense uh, until this trade thaw news came yesterday. Now it makes quite a bit of sense. Plus the market is short. Um, the one wrench in all this, of course, is you know it, it, we have we have two sides that are loaded with ego doing this negotiation we obviously have Trump and his team a bunch of sociopathic egomaniacs and then we have Hugh and, and, and their team also um, driven by ego and hubris and pride uh, I won't claim to understand the Chinese team uh, the way I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of the US team but I do see that they are driven by ego and so when you have this kind of negotiation logic is is not really um, part of the game so a lot of things can happen so you just gotta be open-minded uh, look both sides and keep things uh, in a tactical keep trading in a very tactical place in your mind um, Things can turn on a dime and things can change on a dime, a la yesterday. Let's look at equities. High was again 40, what, 44. Um, we do see very strong resistance up at 70, but we're just going to leave this alone for now. Um, again, this kind of bar, although this kind of bar in equities, this is just the middle of the range now. So this isn't as powerful as the bars in dollar Swiss, uh, euro dollar, and dollar yen. This is literally just the middle of the range. There's every reason to think that you could probably sell it up here between 60 and 70. Um, but why not just wait for the bad news to come and sell with the news? Um, so we're just going to leave that alone for now. Dollars are came charging lower. Again, we're not gonna we're not gonna play with this. Um, 
but based on this technical pattern here this does have some more downside you could probably sell this between 15 20 and 30 a um, lot of momentum type guys have done very very well and will need to protect their p and l um, on the way down you would expect the first large chunk of stops are going to be here at this 1490 level and our old friend euro norway big red bar obviously yesterday not as powerful as the dollar bars but still powerful enough um, the proc you know the correlation here is risk on dollar euro norway goes lower risk off euro norway goes higher so it's kind of one of these world of one trade type deals here but um, saved us yesterday with our shorts uh, we'll be selling at 95 today uh, just kind of churning this short position um, try and buy some back at 90 maybe buy some at 85 if the 85s get filled try and sell 90s again um, again we are looking for a move down to nine at the minimum uh, you know nine nine eighty seven is our target but based on these risk on bars we're feeling a little bit more comfortable that this is going to go back to 970 so core short in a real slow uh, trading manner we're not trading this on big figures we're not jobbing this we're just, we're core short on the half a percent so goes down four or five handles we buy and then we leave offers above to improve our average. That's Euro Norway. Let's go to Dollar China. Um, this would have been much more interesting if we'd closed below seven. Obviously, there's massive support at, at uh, 696. We're back at 703.99, which is a bit of a surprise for me that stocks are where they are with this where it is. Um, we we'll just use this as a barometer, right? And um, below seven is risk on. Towards seven ten is risk off. Alrighty, now uh, I've said enough. U.S. Uh, very little data today. Import prices, crude inventories. We do have uh, unemployment change out of Australia. That will be Thursday morning in Europe late night for New Yorkers um, that's gonna move the Oz so uh, if, you, if you're running an Aussie long or if you're running any Aussie you know be aware that's that's a big one uh, and otherwise we're watching these European numbers to see if this 11160 holds in Europe and we will watch we will watch the UK CPI um, see what happens there if that's hot kind of have to start thinking about maybe uh, not today but start thinking about both sides of um, of sterling but anyway uh, let's put sterling aside um, and focus on uh, this euro today focus on our euro Norway and Aussie top side good luck out there people make some dough and I will see you tomorrow